Thank you. Uh, senators, if you can hold on the line, we, we now have our next uh, witness witnesses uh, before us. So I'd like to welcome uh, Ms Nova Peris, OAM, and Mr Peter Francis. Uh, thank you for taking the time to give evidence today. Information about parliamentary privilege has been provided to each of you and is available from the Secretariat. Ms Peris and Mr Francis, the committee has received your submissions as submission 44 and submission 33 respectively. If you wish to make any amendments or corrections to your submissions, uh, please let us know this, this afternoon. For the Hansard record, could you each please state your full name and the capacity in which you appear today? And you are very welcome to make a brief opening statement before I go to questions from the senators. And I'll just let you know who the senators are that are on. Uh, we have Senator Bragg from New South Wales, uh, Senator O'Sullivan, and Senator Dodson in Western Australia, and also Senator Thorpe from Victoria and myself as Chair, uh, Senator McCarthy. Uh, Ms Perris, we'll go to you first. Uh, you, you're just on mute. <laughs> there we go. Um, thank you, Senator McCarthy. Um, I'd like to thank the honourable members of the committee for the opportunity to appear here for you today. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm a Larrakia country up here in Darwin, and I acknowledge their ancestors past, present, and their emerging leaders up here in, the, in, uh, in Darwin. Um, I appear as a member of the Free the Flag campaign, and also in my own capacity as a, um, a well-known Aboriginal um, um, identity here in Australia. And so I'd like to make a brief statement. I have spent the past 16 months on the front foot fighting to free the flag. I've taken all the trials and tribulations thrown at me. I've spent significant amounts of money and invaluable time investigating and working towards the process to free our flag. I've spent hundreds of hours in discussions with Ms. Laura Thompson, Mr. Michael O'Connor, and our lawyer, Peter Francis from FAL, who have all worked tirelessly together. I've also spent hundreds of hours working across this country, speaking with Aboriginal people uh, to them to be able to use their symbol. As this committee will have heard, many of these people have not sought to profit from the use of the flag. Rather, they have included the flag on uniforms or on team jumpers to wear as a symbol of pride and belonging. As you're aware from my submission, I was issued with a veiled threatening email from WAM with the subject title, Urgent and Formal Notice, WAM Clothing versus Nova Paris. This veil threatening email from WAM was in relation to the Aboriginal Surfing Champion and proud Vajalung man, Solomon Bailey. I won't go into the detail, however, my initial reaction was, what the F? Who do these people think they are? Putting me on notice regarding the Aboriginal flag, asking me to contact these non-Indigenous people to discuss our flag. I know all too well how hard it is to achieve in sport, and the sadness that Solomon Bailey portrayed was gut-wrenching. It was at that moment I joined forces and gave, note, gave my voice and attention to the Free the Flag movement. From here, I have heard countless stories of this pursuit, from aged care homes to the AFL joining us to stand in against the exploitation and threats. It is important for the committee to see these threats in the broader experience of Aboriginal people in the justice and legal systems. The lack of clarity and lack of confidence in navigating direct threats from a wide organisation has disempowered my people. So with this in mind, in the footsteps of many other Aboriginal people who have sought resolution to something manifestly broken, I have travelled to Canberra multiple times, briefing senators and members of parliament to help you all understand the damage that was being done by WAM towards the Aboriginal communities, and also to all the non-Indigenous organisations that slowly removed our flag from merchandise that they all chose to wear in honouring our pride of our living culture. I think you all know what the flag means to me, what it means to our mobs across the country and to the hundreds of thousands of non-Indigenous people who, we, who also love our flag with pride during, and wear our pride, uh, flag with pride during significant events. To begin with, I want you to see this here. This is a trophy from 1981 when I was 10 years old, under 11's cross country championships. It means the world to me. It was where I first realised I could run and win. My mother kept all my trophies and school reports as they were all important to me at the start of my journey into international sporting stardom. Why I'm showing you this is because what I've discovered over time is what this copyright is 
what we were all discussing apparently comes from a piece of art. Well, where is this piece of art or drawing and why is it so important to Harold? Harold said many times that the flag was his creation. It's my dreaming, it belongs to me, he said numerous times. Well, you see, if it was art or drawing, it would look like this behind me. It would sit on the wall and stay on the wall. How would that piece of art gain its value by sitting there? Well, we all know that it didn't. We as Aboriginal people never saw the artwork or a drawing and neither did Judge Ian Shepherd of the Copyright Tribunal. But I'm not a lawyer, but let's have some common sense prevail here. A drawing done or an art piece painted was never and have we seen it today. It somehow became a flag, the flag that was apparently given to Gary Foley in 1972. It was not a piece of art, it was a flag. Now I can tell you more about express permission. I would say Harold gave Gary Foley the express permission, which is permission granted by the author, Harold Thomas. I would say Harold relinquished his sole copyright when he gave a flag, this, a flag, not a piece of art to Gary Foley to take, the, take to the Aboriginal people. Gary took the flag to the East Coast and then to Canberra where it was then the Aboriginal people who adopted a flag. We did not adopt a piece of art. We took hold of a flag, a flag that was presented to us, black for us, the yellow, the sun, the giver of life, and the red for the blood of all that has been shed. We Aboriginal peoples did not know about this flag that was artwork. It was given to us as a flag, not a piece of art. This isn't about Harold. It's not about Gary Foley. It was what was given to us. It was express permission. Then it was implied to us Aboriginal people. It was ours. We adopted it. We gave it value, we gave it rise, we gave it notoriety. I congratulate ATSIC and then the, and the then Prime Minister, Paul Keating, and the Governor General Bill Hayden for the proclamation of our flag. Giving it the status of belonging to this continent, it rightly deserved as a direct result of the profound love given, it to, given to it by us, the Aboriginal peoples who adopted it in 1972. It was our implied licence that gave it rise. If it was still art and a copyright, it would still be back there, hanging on wall with little or no value. Absolutely, it was the right thing to do. And it had to be done off the back of Kathy Freeman's victory in 1994 when she won Commonwealth Games gold. Kathy Freeman should have been disqualified as she carried our flag that was not officially recognised as a nation's flag. I think there was a lot of backdoor conversations that took place to ensure that the Aboriginal flag be given the status it deserved, hence the proclamation the following year. And while the record shows that Harold Thomas resisted it, we believe the Governor General got it right in declaring this important symbol as the flag, average, sorry, as the Aboriginal flag. It surely reflected the groundswell of support from Aboriginal people to have their flag recognised. This highlights to me that as a standalone symbol or piece of art, there is limited value. The value of the design is only in the recognition of the symbol as a flag of the Aboriginal people by Aboriginal people. I would personally go on record and saying that I believe that Harold Thomas does not care about the flag. If he, he did, he would have the original drawing or artwork like I have my under 11th trophy here. This trophy is 39 years old. I know the flag is 50 next year, but it was 26 years old when Harold took it to the court to claim copyright and not once he produced evidence of art or painting. And when he did take it to the tribunal, he was quoted several times saying, I have always been frustrated when others who are not Aboriginal use the flag blindly to make a profit off it. Whilst I understand it is necessary as part of these proceedings, I find it absolutely disgusting that anyone in the federal parliament can give the time of day to Mr. Ben Wooster. He's been found, found guilty of exploiting our culture and our art. He has disrespected our 40,000 years of culture in the pursuit of cashing in on gullible uh, tourists at the expense of us. And here he is sending cis and desist notice to our community members. That itself speaks volumes. And how can anyone not see this? Ben holds two licenses from Gifts Mates and Wham after being found guilty of exploitation fined by the ACCC. He has never paid a cent of that $2.3 million fine and still he continues to profit off our pride. It is therefore not we as Aboriginal pe people who seek to exploit our flag. Rather, we are seeking to uphold its integrity and to ensure that it is in the hands of the people who made it what it is. And by his own measure and standard, does Harold believe that Wham is not exploiting the, the flag? I'm almost finished. Just lastly, copyright. So 
What about the copyright of the artist? Many will claim that this case is similar to the Aboriginal copyright claims, such as the artist of the late Albert Namandura. And while the copyright struggle highlighted a serious injustice for Mr Namandura's family, this is not the same thing. The individual artworks are not on nurses' uniforms and they're not on sporting attire. People do not march with these pieces of art as they lend their voices to Aboriginal deaths in custody for land rights against racism. They are not tattooed on with pride on the skin of our people. I think it goes without saying that the flag is part of Aboriginal identity and heritage. It is not a commodity that hangs on the wall and can or should be owned by an individual. It is the community's flag. It is the Aboriginal people's flags. It is the sovereign right of Aboriginal people to have an emblem and a flag that distinguishes us from other sovereign nations. The federal government should not have allowed the copyright of the flag in the first instance. And I have to admit, I totally agree with Mr. Demetrius Elliott's barrister who submitted a submission regarding the power of the Governor General. In February this year, myself, um, along with um, um, Laura Thompson and um, and my colleague, uh, Michael uh, McConnelly, we wrote to the Governor General asking him to make the rules for the Aboriginal flag under Section 6 and under Section 7 of the Flags Act. And Mr Demetrios, he also wrote, by the proclamation, the Commonwealth has in effect acquired the copyright of the Aboriginal flag. In support of this construction, it is part of the indicta of ownership of copyright that the owner may authorise others to do acts associated with the copyright. Further, it is an infringement of an act is done without the licence of the copyright owner. The Flag Act appoints the Governor-General as a person who, since the proclamation, holds the right to licence the use of the Aboriginal flag. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Paris. I might see if uh, Mr Peter Francis is on the line. Mr Francis, are you there? He's, I think he's on mute. I beg your pardon, Senator. I am here. Thank you, Nova. Thank you. Um, would you, you you have the call now, Mr. Francis, if you'd like to introduce yourself, and if you also have an opening statement for the committee? I will. Thank you, Senator, and I do. My name is Peter Francis. I'm a partner at FAL Lawyers. We're solicitors to Spark Health, Clothing the Gap, and the Free the Flag campaign. Now, thank you for the opportunity to appear before you. I'm speaking to you today from Talbot in Central Victoria land traditionally owned by the Jar Jar Wurrung people, and I paid my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. I pay my respects also to all Aboriginal people involved in the creation, adoption and campaign to free the Aboriginal flag. My colleagues and I at FAL Lawyers have been representing Spark Health, Clothing the Gap and Free the Flag since June 2019. Aboriginal health agencies, such as my client, have used the flag to encourage Aboriginal people, particularly Aboriginal men, to engage with those agencies and have their health issues attended to. Every dollar spent by these agencies on a flag licence is a dollar not spent on their mission. At the same time, they may become less effective if they do not use the flag. For other reasons, we became involved. In the course of our involvement, we have dealt directly with Wan Clothing and legal representatives in relation to their cease and desist letters concerning the use of the Aboriginal flag. We have sought copies of Wan's claimed exclusive licences, but they have not been provided. Rather, a copy of a document which purports to be an authority for Wan to sue people on behalf of Mr Thomas for copyright infringement was supplied. It may be that there are Wan licences, it's just that, curiously, as solicitors for alleged copyright infringers, we are yet to see them, even in redacted form that protects commercially sensitive terms. In this statement, Senators, I will, on behalf of the campaign, present our preferred solution for the flag, justify the use of compulsory acquisition if needed, and lastly, describe certain legal issues for consideration. Our preferred solution is for the Commonwealth to leave the ownership of the flag's copyright with Mr Thomas in acknowledgement of his being the creator of the flag, to acquire the existing licences and the right to grant future licences, to compensate all parties as required by law, and to appoint an Aboriginal flag officer to administer the Commonwealth's acquired rights in accordance with rules made under the Flags Act. The rationale for this solution is that 
copyright ownership is undisturbed, the Commonwealth replaces the existing licensees and they, and Mr Thomas, achieve their objective of financial gain, the flag is freed from its copyright restraints and Aboriginal people are free to use their flag as they choose. We are aware of the government's flag negotiations and we support them. We seek involvement in fashioning their outcome and believe they should be informed by the possibility of compulsory acquisition and the legal issues which I will describe shortly. If the negotiations fail, compulsory acquisition is justified because we must have a, we must have a resolution. Every day without one diminishes the value and integrity of the flag and threatens its position. This artwork was created with the express purpose of being a flag for a people and a movement. The situation is unique without precedent and hopefully never to be repeated. There is a national interest here that transcends any personal interest. Intellectual property should not and is not beyond the reach of compulsory acquisition. If homes can be acquired this way, why not copyright? And finally, the Commonwealth has in the past, rarely it has, compulsorily required intellectual property rights, such as its 1915 acquisition of the Bayer Aspen patents. Now, as to the unresolved legal issues relating to the flag, and those already mentioned to a number of them, questions arise such as whether Aboriginal people right now have a right to use and reproduce the flag. Harold Thomas created the flag for a people and a movement of which he was part. Aboriginal people, therefore, have an arguable right to use the flag as implied licensees or as beneficiaries of the fiduciary basis on which Harold Thomas holds his copyright. There's also the question of whether the 1995 proclamation has amounted already to a compulsory acquisition of either the copyright in the flag or a licence on behalf of all Australians to use the flag without restriction. Finally, the legal questions also include whether Mr Thomas is already entitled to compensation, whether the licences granted by him have any validity, and whether the cease and desist letters issued to date are illegal threats of litigation. These matters have never been litigated, but the Free the Flag campaign is confident of being resourced to do so if needed. We would urge the government to take these matters into account in seeking a resolution and determining the amount of compensation. Finally, we would also urge the government to resolve the issues surrounding the flag without delay and remove the copyright paywall that sits between the flag on one side and on the other, Aboriginal people and organisations and all Australians. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Francis. I'll go now to Senators for questions and begin with uh, Senator Thorpe. Thank you, Chair. Uh, and thank you, Ms Paris uh, and Mr Francis for your contribution today. Uh, we've heard evidence in this inquiry from Aboriginal people expressing concern that if the government compulsorily acquired the copyright. It might mirror other shameful instances of government control over Aboriginal people's lives and property, like stolen wages, land stages, stolen generations, and so on. Uh, do you have a view on how Commonwealth ownership, whether it be copyright or licenses of the flag, might raise similar issues? Um, thank you, Senator Thorpe. Um, for me personally, I sort of feel that this whole issue has come into the spotlight when Wham came into the scenario, um, sending you know letters to the mobs, the cease and desist, and then you're seeing our sporting codes um, slowly, um, you know, sort of getting the Aboriginal flag off their sporting attire and off their sporting fields. And when you get rid of the Aboriginal flag, the Torres Strait Islander flag is also slowly disappearing. And that, that's the effect that's that's going on right now. So, so to answer your question around the compulsory acquisition, you know, like for myself as a Territorian, you know, we suffered um, a lot of injustices during the um, compulsory acquisition during the Northern Territory intervention. 
um, where you know access to Aboriginal communities was lifted, and you know, um, you know, we've, we're still suffering the the ill effects of that. You know, government compulsory um, acquiring, if you like, the stolen generation, sending children um, to missions. You know, we've we've suffered that. I sort of feel right now we suffer at the hands of uh, greedy people may, wanting to profit of us. The fact that the flag was proclaimed by the government, that by the governor general in 1995, to me, in a way, I see that as an elevation of. Um. Sorry, Nova Paris, are you still there? Yep. Okay, we just lost you Hello? for a sec. Yep. Yeah, keep going. Yep. Yeah. So I sort of feel that um, the fact that the flag was proclaimed already by the Governor General in 1995, to me that was more than symbolic of us being valued equally alongside with the Australian flag. So to me, the government compulsory acquiring it, I sort of feel that that was already done in 1995. Things of, you know, we, we, we had a, trail, a, a train going on the railway tracks and all of a sudden this, this train has effectively derailed over the past 18 months. And I don't think if we go back to the way things were before WAM became involved, when when we had Aboriginal organisations, you know, like a you know a number of um, Aboriginal people in particular like to make Aboriginal jewellery, um, you know that that should be allowed, um, senators. It should be allowed that Aboriginal people can express their identity through being able to um, reproduce the flag to where however we see fit and. I don't see anything different to what already happened in 1995. If anything, this happens, I feel a sense of human equality because our flag is going to be valued and reflected as the same as the Australian flag. Thank you. I just have one uh, further question. Uh, I'm interested in your views if some of the difficulties people are facing with the flag might be solved by establishing an Aboriginal community controlled model that governs its use rather than the government. Um, I, I, I'm i all for that in a way and I think um, Peter, uh, Mr Francis raised that, you know, we know that the Australian flag has a Commonwealth flags officer, you know, if there was a, an entity that was set up to say it was in the Aboriginal um, Aboriginal flags officer, and and I also should make mention that you know it was the Commonwealth's agenda in uh, two thousand to set up Reconciliation Australia. So the government has a mandate for reconciliation in this country, and I believe that every single organisation that has a reconciliation action plan, you know, like we already have it. Um, if if you're a um, a supply nation, you know you register, you're there. We know that 51% the Aboriginal organisations and people wanting to do the right thing go to supply nation, knowing that they're going to get a predominantly owned Aboriginal organisation for government procurement. So every single organisation, if, if there wasn't an Aboriginal flags officer, that all these um, agencies with reconciliation action plans, they should be allowed to wear the Aboriginal flag, the AFL, the NRL, from all your little schools, all your groups, because when you're trying to reconcile, part of reconciling is reconciling with us as Aboriginal people and the flag is our, our identity. When you mention Aboriginal people, you know, this flag comes hand in hand, we, we are one with it. So that's how I sort of feel. And, you know, you, anyone who has a reconciliation action plan shouldn't have to pay to use to show their appreciation and love and respect of Aboriginal people. Thank you, Ms. Paris. Uh, Chair, no further questions from me. Thank you, Senator Thorpe. Can I go to Senator O'Sullivan? Yes. Uh, is is uh, Ms. Paris still there? I think. Uh, Nova. Yes, I'm still here. Before right. I ask a question. Yep. We've just uh, yep. got an issue with the camera. I'm not sure. We just can't see you yep. at the moment. But uh, Senator O'Sullivan, you have the call. Can you so hear long me, as Ms. Senator, Paris can hear um, you. Ms. Paris. Yeah, I can hear you. Are you able to hear me? Okay, good. Thank you. Yes, I can. Yeah. Uh, look, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, we can all really admire 
uh, the passion that you bring to this. And I think the, um, uh, you know, you, you, what you've demonstrated to us uh, through your submission and, and today your testimony is uh, is the importance and the value that uh, that you place. And I think, uh, you know, um, speaking you know, more broadly for the community, uh, the value that the Aboriginal flag has uh, for Aboriginal people across Australia. Um, so I, I thank you for that. Um, can I just ask, um, are you, you, you're wearing a, a T-shirt, uh, Free the Flag. Are you speaking on behalf of uh, the official organisation, Free the Flag? Uh, no, I'm just speaking as Nova. <laughs> so okay. like for me, I mean, I mean, obviously Laura Thompson, um, myself and Michael um, Connolly, um, we, we have travelled several times. We, as individuals who have been affected by, um, you know, I, I guess the impact of what's happened with these licences. So I joined forces in giving my voice as, you know, someone who has a national profile to, to you know, to talk about it, to bring, um, I guess, added um, media exposure to it. So I'm speaking first and foremost as Nova Paris, um, you know, the Australian athlete, ex-athlete, ex-senator, whatever you like to sort of call me. But um, I'm very passionate. I think this is the um, the the medium that we've been able to use to elevate our voices and concerns of the community. Okay. So one of the things that I'm really struggling with uh, with regards to what you're suggesting in with regards to, uh, in particular with the compulsory acquisition, is I, I really am concerned about the the, the flow-on effect of that, if that was to transpire. Uh, you, you don't recognise, I think what you were saying before is the, uh, you don't recognise that um, that the flag is, is artwork, is that is that right? You just said it's just a flag. How is there, how is there actually a difference? Well, I guess for me, like, this here is a framed bit of art. And we as Aboriginal people were never presented with art. We were presented with a flag. If we go back 49 years ago, and if Gary Foley had taken a piece of art to the tent embassy and told mob on the ground, this belongs to Harold Thomas, he did it, it's a piece of art, we're gonna make it into a flag, but we're going to eventually have to pay to use it. I can guarantee you everyone who would have said, you can, you know what to do with it. You can stick it where the sun don't shine. For me, that is a piece of art. And what I'm grappling with, if it was so important, this piece of art to Harold Thomas, who comes out and says, oh, it's my dreaming. It's my story. Well, where is it, Harold? He's never produced a piece of art to say how valuable it is. It would never have increased its value if it wasn't for us as Aboriginal people taking it as a, as a flag and giving mm. it the rise, the notoriety, the, sign, the, the significance. We've marched under this, you know, the sporting people, people have put this um, flag over their coffins when they've died. People have tattooed on it. You know, like we, we can't get mixed up between art and a flag. The art has never been presented to us as that. We don't know where it is. All we knew was 49 years ago, it came as a flag. And that's what we're saying. It was implied to us. The permission was given from Harold to Gary Foley in a format of a flag when it was given to the Aboriginal people who ran with it. You, we, we adopted it. So how do you take back? When it was given to us, it was free. And now 49 years later, you're saying we have to pay or seek permission to use it. Where does our implied license fit in the whole scheme of things? So uh, what I'm struggling with, what you're saying, is, um, isn't, isn't the medium in which it's produced, uh, isn't that just sort of semantics, whether it's a flag or whether it's, you know, on a canvas or on a on the bark or whatever medium, I mean, I'm not struggling to understand what you're, the position well, I, that you're I taking guess here. What I'm saying is, 
I'm a, I'm an artist as well. I've painted. Yeah. I've I've created artworks. I've sold artwork. I'm all for pr uh, preserving the rights and intellectual property of Aboriginal artists. What is art? But it was never presented to us as art. It was presented to us as a flag. It was presented to us as a flag that came on a flagpole. It was erected and it was a symbol of us. It gave us our identity. And for 49 years, we've run with that. It's internationally renowned. You know, when people like Coldplay, Chris Martin, Ed Sheeran, and all these international artists, they come out and they wear an Aboriginal flag on these T-shirts, that's acknowledgement that they're giving to us as First Nations people. They're not putting a T-shirt on saying, we are representing Harold Thomas's dreaming. We're not putting a T-shirt on to give kudos to Harold Thomas to elevate, you know, so he can continue to seek royalties from the flag world. Harold has never raised a sweat in his life to give value to this flag. We've promoted it. We've given it notoriety. We've given it the meaning. That's what I'm saying. It, it, it was never presented to us. In fact, if anything, then we have been misled as Aboriginal people. We should be up in arms in that because we've been misled. We were never told it was a piece of art. It was framed. It was special. It was Harold's. No, it came to us as a flag. We've gone, yes, it was implied to us that this is our flag. And so much so that the Governor General... Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Senator O'Sullivan. Uh, may I just step in yes. for a moment, just in terms of sure. um, Senate uh, procedures and Ms. Paris. Uh, given the, the mention of, of Mr. Thomas, uh, we will need to obviously clarify and provide him an opportunity to respond in terms of uh, some mm -hmm. of the, the commentary that's taking place at the moment, just to alert you both. And Senator O'Sullivan, we can seek further uh, questions in relation to some of your uh, line of questioning. Over to you. You have the call, Ms. Senator Sullivan. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I sort of lost what I was going to ask there, actually. Um, I, I guess I'm, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm concerned that, I mean, you, you speak, that's right, you, you, you seem to be speaking with um, some kind of, presenting to us with some sort of authority on the history of of the flag, but did do you know whether anyone actually asked Mr. Thomas uh, whether or not um, uh, you know before it was proclaimed, uh, you know what 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 his views were on on this? I mean, it's it, it's hardly his fault, is it? Well, I think there has been a submission put in by a couple of organisations that give detail around what sort of transpired um, in the 12 months or 18 months leading up to the um, to the proclamation of the flag. But all I know is that it was a, um, a mandate around the human rights element um, back in 1994 um, around giving the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander um, official status. Um, so I like for me to comment on that. All I can say is from the perspective of what Aboriginal people have have expressed their views and their, their self, well, yep, it was proclaimed. And like I mentioned to, um, you know, Senator Thorpe before, like, you know, the proclamation to me is, is a way of um, giving Aboriginal people equal status. You know, we've got our, our emblem, we've got something that it's representative of us as sovereign people. And the, for the Commonwealth to acknowledge that in 1995, I believe, you know, the Governor-General got it right, the Prime Minister got it right, ATSIC got it right, they all supported it. Um, and, you know, the flow effect was that, was I understand that Mr Thomas, um, you know, had has been compensated um, for that, for the use of the flag. So, I... <laughs> For me, this so, is this but is. What, but what what authority are you? Speaking Final on, question, Senator on, O'Sullivan. As, from a historical perspective, because you, you, you seem to be I, speaking I'm, about something that, and, and you're, you're casting aspersions over, 
Uh, over, Mr. Thomas. Um, like, were you there? Are you what? What? What grounds? No, I, I wasn't you... there. I, I, all I know, I've read the transcript of the copyright. The transcript, um, Mr. Thomas didn't come to the copyright um, hearings with any piece of art. Um, he came with a couple of witnesses, the lady, um, Miss Hanson, who made the flag, but he certainly didn't come with any evidence to say he did. Like, I'm not questioning a number of things, but my point is what I'm trying to say is if something was so valuable to him, such as a piece of art, something that he designed, he's never produced it. And we as Aboriginal people were never presented with his artwork. We were presented with an Aboriginal flag, a flag that became known to the rest of the world, to the rest of this country that was symbolic and sim um, that was a representative of us as um, sovereign people of this nation. Uh, Senator O'Sullivan, I'll go to Senator Dodson now. Senator Dodson, you have the call. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, if I could ask um, and uh, uh, say good day to, to Nova and to uh, Mr. Uh, Francis. Uh, but if I could go to you, Mr. Francis, if there's I'm just a bit intrigued that there's been no litigation to uphold the the broad property right of uh, the Aboriginal people. Is, is that because there's no real basis for it in, in the Whitefellas law? No, Senator, not at all. In fact, it's the same question that that's occupied our minds in that we've informed WAM and we've informed Mr Thomas of our views of their claims and we've invited them, as it were, if you'll forgive the expression, to put up or shut up and they've done neither. There is no case that there could be a case. As I said in my opening statement, Senator, there are a number of issues that relate to the flag and relate to the licences that have been issued under it or the copyright, rather, and they have never been litigated by the courts. And uh, they should be, in my respectful view, because they go to the value of the, the flag. And in terms of the law of copyright, um, that is the forum, or that's the legal basis on which all these issues um, would be considered. So there is law that would allow the proper consideration of these points. In addition to the Copyright Act, I should have also mentioned there's the Flags Act and the import and impact, as Nova Paris has already indicated, of the proclamation. So, yes, there are, there are matters, there are means of, of agitating them in front of the courts. We've um, received a lot of evidence where people are basically saying Mr Thomas's copyright, copyright ought to be respected. And on the other hand, saying that the Commonwealth should not acquire his copyright in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. Now, and without his voluntary surrender or entering into an agreement with the Commonwealth, uh, it seems as though One of the options put to us was that Aboriginal people need to design another flag or, as I think I understand Ms Paris is saying, the flag has got this moral and ethical cultural investment in it to such a degree that um, there has to be a way where that can be realised in law somehow as yes. the property of the Aboriginal people. Yes. Now, can you help us find a way through this that, um, I mean, at the moment we know the government is involved in some form of negotiation with, I presume, with the Thomas and Wham and, and Copy uh, Mate, etc. Um, 
on your submission, you, you seem to say that there's no real legal basis that maybe upon which they are involved in those discussions because there's no evidence to say that there's any validity. Well, Senator, if I may, a couple of points. First, we support a negotiated and agreed outcome. That to me is the quickest way home, given that the negotiations are already on foot and we would encourage them. But I say also that there's nothing that focuses the mind of people around a negotiation table than the prospect that a third party might make the decision for them. And that's the value, we say, of compulsory acquisition. And we say also that the government, not voluntarily as it were, tied on hand behind its back when going into those negotiations. Now, as to the point of what rights WAM does, I would trust the government is better informed than my firm is as to their rights. I don't say that they don't exist, I just say I've not seen evidence of them beyond that ACP2. But we say also that the value of the flag, its future value, which is what would be um, considered in compensating, needs to take into account what's happening to the flag right now, with its integrity and its value being eroded through this current experience. And that should inform what gets paid by way of compensation. It seems to me that WAN can't have it both ways. They can't create a situation whereby Aboriginal people and organisations are ceasing their use of the flag and looking, in fact, to design a new flag. Can't do that on the one hand and run down its value, as it were. And on the other hand, ask for a big cheque. The two don't seem to go together. Um, and as to the retention of Mr. Tom Mr. Thomas's rights, a solution that we've advocated would have him retaining his copyright. And even if he lost his copyright, he would still retain his moral rights, rights that would allow him forever to be acknowledged as the artist, to stop other people falsely claiming that they're the artist, and rights to prevent any, derog any derogatory rather use of the flag. So there is a path forward. Our submission really goes to what should be paid. And the final point on that, if I might, Senator, the value of this artwork has been created by the Aboriginal people's adoption of it as their flag. We're talking here, what's, what's, being, what's being discussed here is copyright. What does that mean? It's, 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 it's a statutory right given to a piece of art. Now, what's the value of a piece of art? Well, it depends. It depends on whether it's hanging on a wall, as Nova Paris has said, or it's been adopted by people as their flag. And if, it, if that adoption has happened, well, who's created the value? And what compensation could be paid when that copyright or the right to grant licences under it is acquired? Mm. Maybe, maybe Mr Foley is to be compensated. Well, indeed, Senator, the, the history of the flag and um, the senator that was, the gentleman from Perth who was questioning uh, Nova Paris before about her authority. Well, if you read the facts of the case and if you read the published material and, and, and statements from Mr. Thomas and Mr. Foley, it's pretty clear that Mr. Foley had an involvement in the flag's creation. It could be said that he commissioned it and it was done for him and the people and the movement he represented. And that's the basis of the position we take about implied licenses. Okay, now. Uh, I'm not sure whether Madam Chair is going to raise this with you, but you, you mentioned, um, I, I, I'm not sure whether it was you, uh, uh, Mr Francis, or whether it was Nova, but there's been some correspondence go to the Governor-General to, yes. to seek him to exercise what's presumed to be his authority to do something in relation to the flag. Yes. Now, can that correspondence be... Tendon? Yes, sir. Um, my, yes. Sorry, yes. My firm issued that correspondence and I'd be more than pleased to provide it. Uh, we've not had a response to it, I should say. And what we wanted was pretty simple. Um, under the Flags Act, the Governor General has the power to make rules relating to the flag. And as it happens, the Governor General has made rules relating to the Aboriginal flag. And there are two of them. 
First is permission is not required to fly the flag. And the second, and this is the point, is as follows. The Aboriginal flag is protected under copyright and may be reproduced only in accordance with the provisions of the Copyright Act or with the permission of Mr. Harold Thomas. Now, my suggestion, you fix this whole issue if you just change that rule. And you can get the power to give the governor to change that rule if you make the acquisition by agreement or otherwise of either the copyright or the licenses and the right to grant future licenses. And that rule could simply say um, anyone who's got a legitimate reason to do so may reproduce the flag without further permission from anyone. Full stop, end of story. Okay, my last question, Madam Chair, is again to you, uh, Mr. Francis, but the neighbour might wish to comment on this. The matters that you've put to us in your submission and the concerns that you have, have they been conveyed to the, to the Minister for uh, Aboriginal Australians, as we call today? Yes, Senator, they have. Good, thank you. Thanks, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Dodson. I'll go to Senator Bragg for final questions. Uh, thank you to you uh, both. Ms. Paris and Mr. Francis for your evidence today. I just wanted to recap my understanding of your testimony. So is your position that you don't believe that Mr. Thomas should be in possession of the copyright? No, no Senator, the copyright, as you no doubt be aware, happens automatically by way of the uh, operation of the Copyright Act. What we say, um, is essentially that the right to use the flag, the right to reproduce the flag, um, has already been granted to Aboriginal people, the force of the basis upon which um, the flag was created in the first place. As I said in my opening statement, Senator, the flag was created for a people and for a movement. And when um, a person is engaged to produce an outcome, in this case, an artwork, yes. for a people, purpose, there's an implied license, we say, for them to use the flag. Now, if I may say, just lastly on that point, there is an argument, and it's quite a simple argument, and um, a gentleman very learned in law who's already been quoted here today has produced an argument that said that the act of proclamation may have amounted to, intentionally or otherwise, the acquisition by the Commonwealth of the copyright. And the, the reason for that is once the flag's proclaimed, the Governor General under the Flags Act has got certain powers to allow and authorise people to use the flag. Now, those powers are powers that belong to the copyright owner. So, how can two people have the same power? That's the argument. Okay. Okay, so just so I understand, so so your position is that you 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 believe that Mr. Thomas holding the copyright is wrong at law. No, Senator, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that there's an argument that the Flags Act may have already acquired his copyright. But Senator, it's an argument. It's not a fact. Okay. Okay. Our submission. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Okay, and then I, go, I refer to your submission, Ms. Par Ms. Paris, where you refer to compulsory acquisition. Uh, so, and your view is that the the rights to the flag should be compulsorily acquired uh, without without compensation. Is that right? Yeah, I I believe that um, you know. Yes, that's correct. Okay. And uh, is there any particular view that you want to offer why there shouldn't be a compensation provided? Because I think the historical uh, basis for uh, acquisition has generally provided some form of compensation. Yeah, I've had this discussion um, with Mr Francis and he, he said the same thing but my view is that I, I do not believe um, um, 
gifts mate, you know, you've, you've got the director there um, who I, I've given. Um, in my evidence, I, I guess, you know, th there's no moral rights with either one of those two copyright licensee holders. Um, but I also believe that you know, Mr. Thomas has received substanti substantial amount of money already from the Commonwealth um, for the flag. And like I said previously, if it wasn't for us back in our means as Aboriginal people, you know, the value flag hasn't been by Mr. Thomas, it's by us as Aboriginal people. Okay, I mean, the, I'm interested in this particular part because, I mean, the the vast weight of the evidence from all the Indigenous uh, in, uh, individuals and groups that have presented evidence is that Mr Thomas uh, does in fact own this copyright and he should be compensated uh, fairly um, on every basis that has been put to this committee pretty much. So. Uh, it seems, I have to say, it seems odd to me that you would say that he shouldn't be compensated. Well, like I said, this would never have occurred if it wasn't for Gary Foley taking a flag to Canberra via the East Coast and we gave it rise, we gave it value. It would have been this as a piece of art sitting on the wall somewhere where Mr Thomas has never produced evidence of art so what i'm saying is is it art or is it a flag but that's and, not how the, but that, that's not how the law works told it was yeah that, no that's that's right but okay if we go to law how do we work as aboriginal people where's our implied license how do you take something that was free and then you take that back and say now we as aboriginal have to, people have to pay for the use that we gave value of something. I understand what you're saying, but you know, we can go into a number of times where, um, you know, say for example, the Northern Territory intervention up here, Aboriginal people, the compensation of, um, you know, the compulsory acquiring of land up here. You know, we can go on and on and talk about a heap of injustices. All I'm saying is there are two things here. There is an art, there's a copyright, or there is a flag that was given to us freely back 49 years ago. And like I said, I'm all for the protection of Aboriginal artists, but the irony of this is Harold Thomas has knowingly given two licenses to an individual that's been, um, you know, um, summoned through the court system, fined, by by denigrating, you know, our intellectual. But, One but, hand, we're saying, "Oh, Harold," but but that that's I don't get that. Any person, do you know what I'm saying? I think we've got some person here who doesn't value us as Aboriginal. He went and got fifty thousand pieces of art made in Indonesia, stamped it with an authority to say it's authentic Aboriginal art. Where's the moral rights? Where's the integrity? So we're just fighting for what was given to us freely 49 years ago. I have no, I have no doubt about the sincerity, and I, you know, I am. Um, final, final question. And being, and, and being, um, you know, cognizant of the sensitivity. But in my, in my final question, I, I would again say that, um, w wouldn't it be a bad precedent for? the national government to override uh, the rights of an Indigenous uh, artist that have been um, affirmed and, and widely supported by the Indigenous community? Well, OK, so I want to know, like, yep, you've received submissions, you've received some 50 submissions, but we've got close to 160,000 people who have signed on to say we want to free the flag. I see what you're saying. Yes. I'm talking about maintaining the integrity and the copyrights of all Aboriginal people, but I'm saying, what does it mean to us as Aboriginal people? We made that flag. We, we, we gave it rise. That's what I'm saying. How do you take from us something that you gave us? And what I'm saying is Harold Thomas has been paid. He's been paid in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. No, since 1997, well, 
exclusive rights, this royalty on every flag that is sold. The Aboriginal flag is a lot more expensive than the Australian flag. So he received royalties. He received money from ASIC. He received money from government entities. Don't think that Harold Thomas has not been compensated. He has. For 23 years, he's been receiving royalties from the world. But every single flag that you politicians buy for your officers and you give out, he gets royalties from it. And he gets it because Aboriginal people gave the value of that flag to him. He didn't do it. Nova Paris and Peter Francis, uh, thank you so much for your time uh, today. It's been really valuable to hear from both of you, uh, in particular the passion that you bring to uh, this inquiry and the evidence that you've brought to us today as a committee. Uh, I'd take this opportunity now to just uh, not only thank you both, but also call an adjournment to the senators uh, until quarter to two.